Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1969 Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today's matchup is between the Minnesota Twins and the Seattle Pilots at Six Stadium. On the mound for the Twins today is Dean Chance. His record is 21-10 with a 3.38 ERA. And pitching for the Pilots is Gene Brabender, whose record is 13-3 with a 2.98 ERA. Okay, we are feeling the heat here as we've lost two in a row. We're still three and a half games up. The Twins and the Athletics uh, did gain a game on us yesterday. I don't think it's any coincidence that we've lost two and both of those teams have won two. Um, I feel like this game, somewhere in the algorithm, is designed to be like the old John Madden football games where you might get out to a 35-point lead in a game, but then the, the AI will kick in and they'll come back and score seven touchdowns. You know? And I kind of feel like that's what's happening right now. And I, I just want to find a way to hold on. We, did, we have won 89 games this year you know, like at, for an expansion team um, and with the you know, B-grade players that we've been using. We've been able to sustain a winning season and possibly a division winning season. So I'd like to see that come to fruition. Will it happen? I don't know. I'm feeling very nervous about it, uh, having seen what we've seen so far in these two losses. And what makes it a little tougher, oh hell, a lot tougher, is uh, we're facing Dean Chance today, who's 21 and 10. And tomorrow we're facing Dave Boswell, who's 21 and 6. So back-to-back 20-game -back winners on the docket, and that's going to make things tough. Uh, we do have our best pitcher on the mound today. What that means, I don't know. Uh, he's been he's had two terrible starts in the last four, um, and I, I don't know if he's going to have the, um, the uh, gumption to get through it, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, before we get started with today's game, as a reminder, we do have this contest going on that we're going to give away uh, a Skip Lockwood autographed photo with Certificate of Authenticity. Uh, this contest, you can still get into it. Um, we're going to give it away on Game 162 during the seventh inning stretch. Uh, so you can get in on this still up until Game 161. Uh, we have six contestants so far, so we have a one in six chance with our current contestants. That's a pretty good odds. You have a chance to get in on it too. And just be a subscriber and let me know in the comments of this game that you want to get in. And uh, we will add you to the wheel of fun. Let's go ahead and get this game going. As always, I appreciate everyone following along, like and or subscribe to the channel. Oh, stressful, stressful. We have Green, uh, Gene Brabender on the mound. And it looks like the current Minnesota lineup is batting 250 against him. That's pretty good. And actually, the slugging percentage is 292. So those are good numbers. That's kind of in our favor, I think. All of the bullpen is available if we need them. Dean Chance, a right-hander, is on the mound. So we have all of our regular players in there to play against right-handers. And Freddie Potek is no longer listed as tired, so uh, he will get the start at shortstop. Van Kelly's in there at second base. I don't think we're ever going to play Gene Sutherland again unless it's in a pinch-hitting situation. Um, so we have a much better defense. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the lineup rundown for the Minnesota Twins. Batting leadoff in left field is Mike Adams. Batting second, playing first base, is Rod Carew. Batting third in right field is Tony Oliva. Batting cleanup at third base is Eric Solderholm. Batting fifth at shortstop is Leo Cardenas. Batting sixth and catching is John Roseboro. Batting seventh in center field is Ted Ulander. Batting eighth at second base is Frank Quilici. And batting ninth is the pitcher Dean Chance. Mean Gene Brabender taking the help. 27 start, 13 and 3, with a 2.98 ERA. He has 133 strikeouts, but those 103 walks are what concern me. When I show you his log, 
Oh, and I'll show you. You'll see that he's been walking a ton of batters. Opponents are batting 192 against him. Three complete games. Three shutouts. We could use a shutout today. Fastball tops out at 87 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 49%. He's a slider and sinker pitcher. Lots of off-speed junk. He does have a two-seam fastball that's below league average. Overall at 82, the 28-year-old right-hander goes to arbitration at the end of the year. Which may be sooner than later, the way things are going. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you take a look at his last starts, you'll see that he's had two terrible performances, but both were against the Yankees, um, giving up three runs and four runs. But more, uh, what distresses me more is that he's walked a ton of batters. Six, five, 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 four, and four since the All-Star game. On the plus side, he has won six of his last seven decisions since the All-Star game. Um, so, I don't know what he has to offer us today, but we'll take whatever he can give us and try to go to the bullpen if we um, if we feel like it's not going to go uh, for us. Uh, we have all good defenders in the game today, in theory. They're all above league average. And McNerty behind the plate, who threw out two batters yesterday. So, he has a 41% caught stealing percentage this year. Um, we have a lot of confidence in him. Okay, it's time to get it going. We've got Mike Adams leading off versus Gene Brabender. 2-2 count, and Brabender strikes out Adams. That's a good start to the game. Give me a little bit of confidence. And then Rod Carew comes up. Carew, 6 for 9 and a walk. This is a tough guy to get out. 3-1 count and a ground ball to Johnson at first. He scoops it and steps on the bag for out number 2. And then the anti Carew, Tony Oliva's one for nine against Brabender. And a base hit <laughs> past Johnson for a single. So Oliva on first with two down, and Eric Soderholm's up. It was Soderholm's three run home run that ruined the game yesterday. Here he pops it straight up in front of home plate. Who's going to call for it? I guess it's the catch of McNerdy. So, no damage. We go to the bottom of the first. Let's take a look at our lineup against Dean Chance. Batting leadoff. Playing center field is Tommy Agee. Batting second. In left field is Mike Keegan. Batting third at first base is Darren Johnson. Batting cleanup in right field is Joe Pepitone. Batting fifth at third base is Rich Rollins. Batting sixth at second base is Van Kelly. Batting seventh and catching is Jerry McNerty. Batting eighth at shortstop is Freddie Puttick. And batting ninth is the pitcher, Rob Ender. Dean Chance having a career year. It looks like he's won 20 games twice before. Once with the Angels and then another time with the Minnesota Twins. He's making his 37th start, 21-10. With a 3.38 ERA, 178 strikeouts, and 266 innings pitched, opponents are betting 2.47 against him. Seven complete games, one shutout. His fastball tops out at 90 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is actually pretty low. It's 64% uh, fly balls. Fastball tops out at 90. I'm sorry, it's rated at 90. His fastball and a curveball at 82. Uh, overall, rated to 91, the 28-year-old righty goes to free agency uh, at the end of next season. And I was thinking about that uh, fly ball percentage. Uh, he's only given up 15 home runs. He's never given up 20 or more than 18, technically. So, for being a fly ball pitcher, he doesn't give up the long ball. Let's take a look at their defense. Solid everywhere. Uh, and they have... Rose Boyle behind the plate, who is good uh, defensively. Uh, his arm is an 84. His caught stealing percentage is 48%. Yeah, that's right. He's the best in the American League, so we will not be running today. Okay, here we go. Let's get some runs early. I mean, we know that he's not going to give up more than two runs. So we got to get on him early. 
Tommy A.G. A ground ball to short. One out. That's going to bring up Mike Hegan. Hegan batting 251 versus right-handers and a base hit for Hegan into right field. Runner on first. Now, normally this is, would be where Rollins would be in the lineup and we would just hit and run. But I guess with Johnson, we got to let him swing away. Johnson second on the team with 17 home runs. And a base hit back through the box into center field. Keegan will hold. All right, it's one down, runner on first and second. And Joe Pepitone's up. Pepitone batting 250 versus left-handers. 3 for 11 in his career versus Dean Chance. And he's going to get an infield single. <laughs> oh, man. This is exactly what we need. Rich Rollins, this is a good guy to have up in this position. He's kind of the only bat that we have that we can count on. He's batting 288 and is among the league leaders. Not really an RBI guy. Um, and he's 6 for 17. Uh, we're just going to let him swing away. This could be a double play. 2-2 two -two count to Rollins. And that will be a double play. Damn it. Well, that's it. I mean, like, we know how this works. And if you can't capitalize in the first inning with bases loaded, you're pretty much, uh, you know, your goose is cooked. And that sucks. Here's Leo Cardenas leading it off. Ground ball to second. Kelly making the play. You have to remember, Kelly's a third baseman. We're playing him out of position, and he's been really, really good over there. Here's John Roseboro. Another play to Kelly. I thought for sure I had just jinxed him with an error when it was back-to-back -back like that. Two quick outs for Brabender. Here is Ted Ulander. 315 hitter with a home run, and I think that home run was against us. He gets a base hit up the middle into center field. Two down. I want to guard the line with the pitcher up, but I feel like that's unnecessary just yet. As Quilici strikes out, that is the first K for Brabender. We go to the bottom of the second inning. Van Kelly leading off. Underappreciated on the team. He's only batting 216 with four home runs. But he does stuff like this. He gets on base. A base hit. We're not going to go for two. He walks a lot. McNerdy, three for nine with a home run. He leads the team in sacrifices. And we're going to try to lay down a bunt here. Kelly's got 80 speed. That's a nice bunt to first. Kelly is safe at second. So we have a runner in scoring position for Patek. This is our only shot because Brabender's up next. So it's uh, Patek or bust here. 2 1 count to Freddie. He had the day off and he lines it down the left field line. Kelly scores. And we are up 1 to nothing on Dean Chance. All right. Brabender, you know what? We're going to let him take a cut here. No, we can't get cocky, right? we got to ask him to lay down a bunt. It said 74% chance to steal second. I think they're just baiting us. So, uh, Brabender will lay down a bunt. Uh, Dick Bates yesterday had a double for us. But, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we let Brabender take a cut. He gets the job done. Potex is scoring position. Let's see if AG can come through. Runner in scoring position. 0-1 count, and a fly ball to right center field. It will be tracked down by the center fielder, Yulander. We have a 1-0 lead. That's not nothing. We go to the top of the third. The pitcher is leading off. He's batting 0-64, actually worse than Brabender. Fly ball into left. 
the amount of times that a pitcher puts the ball in play is way off. Like, it shouldn't happen as much as it does. It should be a three-pitch strikeout every single time. All right, one down, back to the top of the lineup with Adams. Feel a walk coming on. Ground ball to short, Patek making the play. Patek had two errors in his last start, so I don't trust anything that is hit to him. Two down for Rod Carew, and Carew rips it for a double into right field. You can't keep Rod Carew down. Um, he's, that's his 34th double in 98 games. Was he injured? No, I guess he's been platooning with Harmon Killebrew, maybe, or something. I don't know. Okay, well, Brabender facing Tony Oliva with two down. Oliva had a hit the first time up. 0-2 count, and Oliva ties the ball game at one. And it's a double. How is that a double? He hit it right to the left fielder. Oh, crap. That's the 19th double, and we are we are in trouble now. Eric Soderholm, he had the big hit yesterday. And Brabender strikes him out. The game is tied. That might be the only one run each team scores today until we get into extra innings or we get the starters out. Here's Mike Hegan leading off. He had a base hit the first time up. Hegan popping it up into foul ground right into this person's part. Down in front for crying out loud. That guy's been sitting there the whole season. <laughs> All right, one down. Here's Darren Johnson. We need somebody to connect. We're not a home run hitting team. Two quick outs. Here's Joey P. And a base hit to right. A two out single. Um, you don't really ever hit and run with two down. So we're not going to do that. We're going to let Rich Rollins take a swang. Whoa, get down. Come on. Ah. Oh. Strand the runner at first. And we head to the top of the fourth. Rob Bender at 45 pitches. He's given up four hits. He hasn't walked anybody yet. Oh, fudge. He walks the leadoff man with two lefties coming up. It's John Rosebor. I can't believe Cardenas will be going. 2 0 count. Line drive to the left. There we go. Play made by Hegan. One down. Ted Ulander is up. I try to say it as Scandinavian as I possibly can. Line drive to first. Get him. Double play. Oh, Cardenas gets back. Okay. Two down, here is Frank Quilici. 0 for 9 in his career versus Brabender. And a comeback here to Gene. And Gene throws him out. Okay. So they strand the leadoff guy. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Van Kelly leading off. He has one of the six hits today for the Pilots. Ooh, striking out. That's the first K for Dean Chance. One down. Nick Nerdy, he had a sacrifice bunt. 0-2. Oh, oh, man. Second time through the lineup. The bottom guys are struggling. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. And he strikes out the side. Oh, man. That feels ominous. We go to the top of the fifth. It's all tied at one. Dean Chance is up. Can our pitcher strike out their pitcher, please? No, come on. Uh, we got him out, but I mean, that's ridiculous, right? The guy's betting 063. It's not like he's slugging. 
All right, we're back to the top of the lineup. This is the third time through for the Twins. Mike Adams, one, two count. Oh, come on! So we, we just keep putting these leadoff guys on for no reason. And he's got speed, and the left-handers are coming up. And it's the fifth inning, so you know this is the inning that we usually get clobbered in. Man. I mean, he, he's, he might be going. Okay, he's hitting the center. Oh, that's it for this game. There's really nothing we can do here. Yep. That'll score two. Three to one. Holy shit, we're in real trouble. I mean, not just today. This is just one game, but I mean, I don't, I don't see how the game's going to let us hang on uh, to the division lead. The damage is done. It's three to one. That I mean, we're not going to score three runs against Dean Chance. Um. I mean, do we let Brabender bat now that we're down? I guess we don't, right? I mean, another disappointing performance. Um, I mean, I want Lou Pinella to bat this game, but not now. I guess we're going to set up Don Bosch, who I don't think has had a hit. He's batting 178, and he's been basically a pinch hitter. Yeah, this game's toast. Let's just get it over with. You know, we'll bring in Ron Locke. I mean, he's the guy that gave up the the bomb yesterday, but I made the mistake of leaving him in against the right-handed cleanup hitter. That's on me. Uh, he's been really good otherwise. Uh, you know that. Roseboro's got an 0 for against him. Should make him 0 for 7 if Kelly can close the mitt. Nope. God. All three innings, a walk... A hit batter, and now an error to lead off the inning. This, you know, there's nothing we can do when the game goes through this. Yep. All right, bottom of the sixth. Johnson walks. I mean, now normally I would hit and run here, but we just need a bomb. I mean, Pepitone's got power. He's got a 90 power, and he's only got 10 home runs this year. So we just have to let him take a cut. Well, he was thinking about it. Of course, nobody pulls the ball in this game. Everybody goes oppo for some reason. Now we will definitely hit and run, even though Rich Rollins is shown that he's got more power than anybody else. He's got like four or five home runs in the last 20 games. They pitched out? We can't pitch out. How can they pitch out? They are not going to give us any chance to win the game. This is no fun when the game does this. That's a good bounce back day for Ron Locke. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning.
Well, now we have to take out Ron Locke and put in Lou Pinella. We may not get through the lineup one more time to use him in a clutch situation, so we may as well just throw him out there. Yep. Yep. So that was useless. Skip Lockwood coming into the ballgame. we got to use all of our best pitchers. He's one of them. He might be the best, actually. Tony Oliva. A comebacker to Lockwood. I really thought there'd be an error. Soderholm gets a base hit. Leo Cardenas, a comeback, of course, because there's got to be at least a dozen comebackers a game to the pitcher, the most important fielder in the game. And then a line out to short. Bottom of the eighth inning, top of the lineup. Yeah, when we left the bases loaded in the first inning, that was the ball game. Mike Hegan gets his second hit. <laughs> Why would we go for two? He's going to be thrown out. So, no. Um, those are in-game stats if you need it. No point in trying to get thrown out. We have our heavy hitters coming up, so maybe Darren Johnson can go deep. Full count. No strikes out. And now Ron Paranowski comes into the ball game. He's not their closer. He does have five saves. And he's closed a lot of saved a lot of games in the past. Pretty good. I mean, I'm glad to have him out of the ballgame. He's a left-handed pitcher. So we can't let Pepitone bat. We need somebody who can come off the bench and hit a dong. And What would you do here? Would you go with Danny Walton or Bill Robinson? We're throwing up Hail Marys here. I mean, obviously, Jerry May and Gary Sutherland hit lefties well, but we... Well, I kind of trust May. I don't trust Gary Sutherland anymore. The game is already trying to, like, swap him out. I think we go with an unlikely hero. I think we go with Danny Walton. Two down, runner on first. Here's Danny Walton. He has a pinch hit home run this year. 2-2 two -two count. No chance. I guess we'll bring in John Morris here. It's the bottom of the lineup. He's a lefty and he's been really good lately. Oh, I almost blew it, didn't I? Maybe you were yelling at me. We got to take Walton out, bring in Steve Comer. We had a 68 out there in right field. That would have been a bonehead move. I'm just blinded by rage right now. But this game will not give us a win until it's maybe too late. Oh, crap. They're going to pitch hit Harmon Killebrew here in the ninth inning. Yeah, so it must be a lefty-righty situation going on. I cannot let John Morris pitch to Killebrew. If we have any chance, we've got to bring in somebody we trust. And that's our closer, Mike Marshall. He's got 42 saves, five blueies. Non-save situation, but... We gotta have him hold it down. 1-0 count. Round ball to short. Can we turn two? We do. We go to the ninth inning. It's Al Worthington versus Rollins, Kelly, and McNertney. I mean, you could do worse. Al Worthington. You see making his 70th appearance for a 40-year-old. 
I mean, he's got a 4.12 ERA. What's his splits? I mean, he gets everybody out. He's pretty good. Got to give him that. We got nobody on the bench to go to that I would trust here. Rich Rollins is our best hitter, so that's a good sign. Let's see. If he doesn't get on, we're not getting anything here. Oh, two count. Yeah. He flips it to right. There's one down. Wow, we are in real trouble, guys. We are in incredible amount of trouble. Two down for Jerry McNertney. And we lose three to one. I said it. We were we would have to not give up more than two runs. And we, we lost it in the first inning. That was it. Crap. We are in real trouble. There's still four games to go. And don't forget, the Twins and Oakland have a game in hand on us. Now, Oakland lost, for what it's worth. Um, Minnesota jumps ahead. They are two and a half back and on the verge of sweeping us at home with their best pitcher coming out tomorrow. And we have Marty Patton. We got Marty Patton going to the hill tomorrow. Uh, let's take a look at the National League. Oh, my gosh. We are dead in the water, folks. Uh, Houston and L.A., they're in a battle as well. Uh, New York should have it wrapped up tomorrow. Uh, actually, I think the same could be said for um, the uh, American League East. Baltimore uh, could wrap it up tomorrow, too. Got to give Cleveland a hand. They they went for it. They traded for a bunch of guys, and, and they almost they almost pulled it off. Siebert throws a shutout for Cleveland. Yeah, they're they're well, they're playing the Angels. Uh, Max Alvis had a home run, and uh, another one. Yeah, Minnesota three one victory. Dean Chance is going to get the win. His twenty second of the year. I mean, the errors, the hit batter. Um, yep. Yeah. Oops, what am I doing? Let's take a look at transactions. Uh, nothing since yesterday. Okay, let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Man, I'm peeved right now. I am very... I don't feel like we have a chance to win the division. I know it seems ridiculous, but I've played, you know, 20 years of playing this game. The gameplay has never wavered. It never improved over the years. And I know exactly what's going to happen. The, the best case scenario is we win on the last day. Or maybe it goes to a playoff. A one game playoff. Um, player of the game. I mean, nobody deserves it. I, I guess um, we'll give it to Mike Hegan for getting two hits. Um I guess. Rob Bender takes the loss. He's 13-4. and four. His goose was cooked. He was not going a sixth inning. The bullpen comes in and shuts it down, but it was already too late. Um, yeah. So, uh, Dean Chance gets the win, 22-10. and 10. Al Worthington uh, gets his 27th save. Tony Oliva, those left-handers, 2-3. Oliva got two doubles. Carew had one. Oliva drove in all three runs. I hate you. <laughs> That's going to do it. We're, I, actually, I, I, I love Tony Oliva. I, love, I, I think he's one of the best hitters. Um, totally worthy of the Hall of Fame. I really do like Tony Oliva a lot. Uh, but, but not today. Uh, that's going to do it. Uh, we're going to come back tomorrow and... Man, we got four games to go, and we are in real trouble. Until then, everyone, have a great day.